Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to this session. Yeah, thank you guys so very much for tuning in. If you're returning, hello, it's good to see you again. And if you're new, hi, my name is Eric. It is wonderful to meet you. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Disclaimer, um, this is not a live session yet again. Um, I am recording this. I am getting over a bit of some bronchitis. Um, so <clears throat> you're gonna hear me coughing every once in a while. I'm gonna do my best to uh, keep that to a minimum. Also, in just in case I need to handle some things, I need to be able to pause the video. So this is not a live session today. So please, if you're thinking that this is a live session, if you think you missed the live, you have not missed the live, this is a recorded reading, yes? With that, on that note, let me pause for a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, guys, uh, welcome in. We're gonna be talking about Mercury retrograde in this session, yes? Now, this is being recorded on December 3rd of 2023. We are, as of the moment of this recording, we are currently in the pre-shadow period of Mercury retrograde. Um, Mercury will be officially retrograde by the 14th of December and will be officially direct by the 3rd of January. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if uh, how recent or how long ago this may have happened in the past but this is a little bit of a unique one at least from my point of view this mercury retrograde is a bit unique i am calling it the new year's eve retrograde um because this mercury retrograde is carrying us into the new year yes uh, like i said earlier um as i previously said mercury is going to be stay is going to station direct officially will officially be direct by the 3rd of january um, and this retrograde in, in terms of true sidereal, a.k.a. constellational astrology, which is what we practice here on Divine Conversations, this retrograde of Mercury is moving through, is moving retrograde through Sagittarius back into Ophiuchus. So, okay, on the surface, or at first you could say this is like a um, New Year's Eve retrograde or a New Year's resolution. There we go. A New Year's resolution retrograde because you could and now i know uh, usually your uh, a um typically you start your new year's resolution on the first of the year right well um I, let's take this a little bit deeper because i feel like we have an opportunity if we'll say you want to make some sort of resolution or you want to make some sort of change in your life any really any retrograde is a good time period for that the retrograde of a planet is well first and foremost it from our point of view a retrograde motion the retrograde motion of a planet is an optical illusion okay um when we talk about a retrograde planet we are saying basically saying that the planet is going backwards is retrograding or is moving in the reverse in terms of its typical forward or orbital movement however this is just an optical illusion okay the planet is not actually moving backwards in its orbit around the sun that never happens but from our point of view on the on the face of the planet on the face of the earth from what we can see it looks like the planet is moving backwards in our sky so that is what we mean by retrograde motion of a planet now in terms of that any sort of retrograde motion of a planet is a good time to reassess um, rethink, rework, rewrite, reprogram, deprogram, if you will, any sort of situations or elements in your life surrounding what that planet holds dominion over. Um, and now Mercury is a planet that goes retrograde, the planet that goes to retrograde the most throughout the calendar year, okay, for us here on the planet. Um, and Mercury is all about communication, learning, expansion, maybe even a little bit of travel. Mercury does rule Gemini, yes? Um, and so whenever we have a Mercury retrograde, when we, whenever we have the retrograde motion of Mercury, I like to say this is the perfect time to really work on deprogramming yourself or rewriting some of the programming that you've got going on in your life, in your mind, in your world, whatnot, whatever. I like to look at, I like to use the analogy of the mind is a computer. 
Your brain is the hardware. Yes, your body is the hardware of your computer. The software would be the, the software and the operating system come from the subconscious, come from the thoughts, the beliefs really, the beliefs that you have in place. Um, the beliefs about yourself, the beliefs about nature of reality, the beliefs about the, about the world, the beliefs about life in general, all that kind of stuff, right? And when Mercury goes retrograde, this is a really great time to work on deprogramming or deleting any sort of software or programming that um, you deem unworthy, okay? Whether it's no longer working for you or if it's just straight up detrimental or toxic, this is a really great time to work on that, to deprogram that, to work on, especially with Mercury moving through Sagittarius and from Sagittarius back into Ophiuchus. This is a really unique time period, especially since it's taking us into the first, it's into the new year, yes. This is a really unique time period for us to really get a deep philosophical understanding of something that may have been going wrong in our lives, something that may have gone askew, or at the very least, just something that you don't, that you want to change, that you don't want to see in the same way, that you don't want to have to keep cycling through, that you want to just reprogram. There doesn't, you don't, whatever the reason may be for you, that's personal. That's between you, yourself, and God in the universe, okay? You don't need anybody else's validation. Ooh. Okay, this is a message for someone. You don't need someone else's validation in order to make proper and or necessary changes in your life. This is a mess and somebody needs to hear this right now because this is coming through really strongly. For whatever reason that you deem necessary, something needs to change. You do, and, and even if, and maybe it doesn't even need to change. Maybe you just want it to change. Maybe it is your desire for this situation, this circumstance to either be going in a different direction, going in a different way, or just to be obliterated, eradicated altogether. That's on you, okay? You don't need anyone else's, and I, I don't mean that in like a, uh, I mean like you made your bed, now lay in it type of energy. I mean, when I say that's on you, that's your choice. Purely 100% your choice. We all have free will here, right? You don't need somebody else's validation to make the necessary and or proper changes in your life that resonate with that work for you. Somebody needed to hear that. Now, what I will say is the validation does come from within and what this Mercury, or Mercury retrograde motion, what, with this retrograde motion of Mercury moving through Sagittarius, expansive, philosophical, deeply thinking, higher learning, higher awareness, long distance travel, Sagittarian energies, this could actually really help you get to a deep philosophical and or strongly analytical understanding of why you want to change something, why you want to reprogram something, why you want to make some sort of New Year's resolution. For me, I will give an example. For me, <coughs> excuse me, this bout of bronchitis has helped kickstart me on a healing journey, a deeper healing journey within my heart. Um, I have actually, for some time now, I have been wanting to, at the very least, reduce, if not completely um, let go altogether of tobacco use. Um, many of you if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you know I smoke tobacco. I roll my own cigarettes and everything. Um, but lately, I've, really wanting to, I've been really wanting to change that. Um, physically speaking, I mean, it's gross, okay. Uh, also, I don't really need to be spending the money on it even though I found a pretty affordable way to do it. I really don't need to be or really even wanna be spending the money on it anymore. And also, I'm noticing now, <laughs> now, that, now that I am getting older, I mean, we're always getting older, but now that I'm, my body is starting to show the effects of certain situations and one of those being I get short of breath really easily and I don't like that. You know, being the active person that I've always been, I used to be, I used, I used to train as a dancer. And yes, I did smoke during those days. We technically, a lot of us did during those days, but you know, I always prided myself on, I still had this really strong lung capacity. That's not the case anymore. And so I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And my desire to be able to have a greater lung capacity again, to breathe clearly again, is enough for me to really start saying, okay, maybe it's time to let go of smoking uh, of smoking tobacco, 
Now, here's the thing. It's not just about saying, all right, well, I'm just gonna quit smoking then, that's it. It's really not even about that because if it's just surface level like that, that really doesn't do anything to heal, to change what has caused me to want to smoke to begin with. Because uh, let me tell you, I mean, I've been, I'm 36 years old now. I've been smoking since I was 13 years old and I've wanted to smoke cigarettes for as long as I can remember, even as being a child. Now, granted, I did have some family members that I would see every so often that smoked, but like, I can't, but my parents didn't smoke. My grandmother didn't like, none of the, nobody in my immediately family smoked while I was a child. It was something that I saw out in the world, out in culture from other people, blah, blah, blah. But it was always something that I wanted to do. I remember, God, I remember being in fourth grade being like, just, oh my God, I just want a cigarette right now. But why is that? You know, a child is not necessarily, unless you, unless you were born under the influence of nicotine, i.e. like your mother smoked when you were a child and you were born with that, that addiction already running through your, that substance addiction running through your system, a child is not born wanting to smoke cigarettes, right? So it's not, for me personally, it's not a question, it's not a statement of, okay, well, I'm just gonna stop cold turkey and then that's gonna be it. No, that's never worked for me. Like, I've been able to quit cold turkey before and just like, just not smoke for an extended period of time, but I always doubled back, I always circled back. The question now is, why am I smoking to begin with? And I'm ready to, I'm ready to answer that question for myself at this time because I have been going through a lot of situations and circumstances that have really showed me where my true allegiances are, where my true alliances are, um, have really opened my heart um, in ways that make me now stronger and ready to start looking at that and answering that question for myself. So I say all that to say, I'm using this as an example for you guys to understand the opportunity that you have in front of you with this Mercury retrograde. Because now I did say this in Patreon, in the Patreon reading that I did yesterday, which was not tip, which was not all about Mercury retrograde. I kind of wanted to save that for the, for the greater collective here on YouTube. But, um, <coughs> excuse me, I am kind of seeing this Mercury retrograde as even though it's moving, Mercury is moving retrograde through Sagittarius, it's kind of giving me Scorpio energies too. But just in the energies of being able to uncover something that's deeply rooted or that's quite profound is what I'm hearing. As Mercury is moving retrograde, intellectual Mercury ruled by Gemini is moving retrograde through a fire sign of Sag the fire sign of Sagittarius. Gemini and Sagittarius are very compatible. Why? Gemini is air, Sagittarius is fire. What fuels fire? Oxygen, right? Okay, so this is a very compatible energy already. Remember, Mercury does rule Gemini. Mercury also rules Virgo, but we're looking at the Gemini aspect of it right now because um, of the air quality. What's going on in Gemini? Nothing, there's nothing in Gemini right now, as of right now, but that's okay. There, I mean, the moon is going to transit through Gemini while at some point, again, it's, the moon is in Leo right now, but it's gonna make her, she's gonna make her way back to Gemini, you know, at some point during this retrograde. Um, but the intellectual side of Mercury can really help you uncover some deep, profound things to make some changes in your life. And then by the time Mercury reaches Ophiuchus, which is all about transmutation and alchemy and, and and changing you will it, you will have if you have taken the opportunity to really do your in investigation to really do your deep dive here in understanding what it is you need to understand to make the proper changes in your life that you want to make Ophiuchus can help you with that transmutational process of taking what it is that you've learned or the understandings that you've come to and now taking that energy and transmuting it into whatever it is you need to move forward okay um, one last thing that I want to say about this, what also could really help you, especially if these changes that you're looking to make or the ways that you're, you looking, you are wanting or yeah, the ways that you're wanting to take advantage of this Mercury retrograde period, what also could really help you with this is the fact that during this retrograde, 
Mercury is going to be conjuncting with the Sun and Mars. <clears throat> Excuse me, not at the same time. This is, uh, is the Mercury is going to conjunct with the Sun first and then with Mars afterwards. But um, conjuncting with the Sun could help you really uh, get to something on a deep soul level, access something on a deep soul level. And if these changes that you are looking to make that you're desiring to go through are on a action-based level, like maybe some sort of negative habits or something like that. The conjunction with Mars can also help you with that because a conjunction is when these two energies of the two planets that are going in that are conjuncting or however many are conjuncting, they all flow together, okay? So this is going to make it easier, essentially, for you to gain the understandings that you need to make changes on a soul level with the sun and or on an action-oriented, action-based level with Mars, okay? It could even be both, you know, but hey, take it as it resonates, all right? So there's the recap there. Um, I want to get into some further messages for the collective in terms of this Mercury retrograde. Again, <clears throat> today is December 3rd, Sunday. Happy Sunday, by the way. Um, happy weekend if you're watching this on a Sunday and your, and your weekend. Happy day to you if you're not. It doesn't matter when you're watching. Happy day to you. <laughs> um, shoot, what was I saying? Hold on. Oh, so uh, as of right now, this is being recorded on December 3rd of 2023. We are currently in our pre-shadow period for Mercury retrograde. Mercury goes officially retrograde, will officially be a retrograde by the 14th of December, and then will be officially direct by the 3rd of January, okay? Um, doorway to power and then wish granted was at the bottom of the deck when I split and started to shuffle. I didn't say anything about it because I was in a different thought process, but now I'm thinking, as I'm thinking through this, that is actually a message here because if you are looking to enter into this new year in with some sort of resolution is what I'm hearing. Take it as it resonates. Maybe you're not necessarily someone that don't, goes for New Year's resolutions. I've never been that person. <clears throat> but this definitely feels like a really strong, a great doorway for you to access, to make some sort of changes in your life, or at least to get the philosophical understanding of what it is you need to change, why it is the way it is, what it has caused it to be, whatever it is for you at this time, what has caused this situation to develop into where it is, or even just to begin all together with, right? You have a really strong opportunity to gain some deep philosophical insights on this for you to make some sort of effective change come the new year or if you want to say it, if you don't even look at it that way, come by the end of Mercury retrograde, you will be have either the form and function in place already or at the very least the understanding of the situation in order to then properly uh, um, install some new programming or some sort of form or function or follow through, okay? Two more shuffles for the collective here. <laughs> Good gossip and prelude, ooh. You may feel not much is happening, however, the path you're on now is leading you to something great. And good gossip. Your reputation is very good at this time. You are being taken about, talked about in a positive way. All right, Mercury is all about communication. Um, so, oh, oh, okay. So some individuals that may have been gossiping about you. Um, boop. Uh, I'm hearing you're on their good side. Um, there may be some individuals, I, I'll say it this way, there may be some individuals during this ret Mercury retrograde that may have been gossiping about you previously, but who are going to come gain some sort of comeuppance. Now, I, I, um, I want to caution, I want to caution against um, wishing revenge on anyone. Um, I want to caution against return to sender energy. Um, and I want to say I, I want to say this as tactfully as possible. Like I don't wish any revenge on anyone, but I do feel this energy of 
individuals that may have been gossiping about you in a negative way or spreading rumors about you or just speaking negatively of you uh, may get some sort of karmic backlash during this Mercury retrograde. It doesn't even really feel like that. It feels like, yes, some of the negative things that they may have said or the negative ways they may have treated or acted towards you may be coming back to haunt them or bite them in the ass. But that's what I'm feeling here is that they're going to be, be proven wrong somehow. And this is just naturally speaking. I'm getting an energy of you're just going about your business, doing what it is that you do. You know, not even really focused on them or what it is they have to say or how it is they're trying to be involved in the story or whatnot, whatever, especially if it has nothing to do with them. And something about your actions, something about your way of being, I feel like Mercury retrograde is going to shine a light on that, is going to highlight that for some individuals and they will effectively be proven wrong. And there may be some sort of karmic or social or uh, some sort of backlash because of it. You know, they may lose a level of cre credibility or they may, they just may like have their, look like they've got their foot in their ass or I'm sorry, their foot in their mouth or their head up their ass or some shit like that. You know what I mean? This is a prelude to something. Good gossip and prelude. Maybe even by the time we reach Mercury going direct is when things are going to pop off in a better way, in a new way. You'll be moving in a new direction. You'll, you'll, maybe you'll have a new job a new position in a new job or in a same job. And something about the conjunction between the sun and then effectively Mars, but really I'm getting the sun. Something about the connect, the conjunction with the sun, <coughs> excuse me, is going to shine a positive light on you somehow. And ultimately as a result, shine a negative light on others who may have tried to put you down, who may have tried to sabotage you, who may have tried to, speak ill of you okay let's see what we've got for the collective for this mercury retrograde golden moment feeling deeply commitment wow okay crowning the situation we have next level Ooh, and then at the bottom of the deck you've got spiritual tests okay now in terms of spiritual tests here you guys i do feel like this is an energy in which you we've been going through these spiritual tests for some time i don't feel like this is talking about anything new right now what i'm actually getting here is that these spiritual tests that you have been undergoing are wrapping up okay um yeah for some of us you could even see this mercury retrograde period as like a final exam type of energy almost as if the universe is testing you saying okay now tell show me what it is you've learned over this process over these last few months, over these last few weeks, over these last few years, even for some of you, I'm hearing. Pause for a moment. To this now. Um, yes, the first thing that I get with spiritual tests here is that there are some spiritual tests that are about to wrap up. Now, I did do um, a collective reading over on Patreon yesterday. This it was more focused around the month of December. Um, I, like I said, I wanted to save the actual official Mercury retrograde um, messages for the greater collective here on YouTube. But there is a similar message here because in that Patreon reading, and if you're not on Patreon yet, I highly recommend that you check us out, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. Um, but the main energy for that was being about being in between worlds. And this is kind of a, a similar energy because what we have here in terms of Mercury retrograde right now is uh, crowning us in this situation is next level. If you leave your comfort zone, you will see accelerated, accelerated growth and change. OK, so uh, that's what that's what this is, this is all about. All right. Now, again, Mercury is moving retrograde through Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a massively expansive energy. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. OK, all and. As of right now, at least as of the 3rd of December, this is going to change within the next few days, but Venus is opposing Jupiter, who is in Aries right now. Um, Aries is the sign of the self, okay? Um, the individual, the number one, the first. Um, and 
you know, who, number one in your life is always you. Even if you've got a big old family, even if you've got kids, number one in your life is always your own self, okay? Mercury is moving retrograde through Sagittarius, who is ruled by Jupiter. Luck, expansion, benevolence, blessings, yes? Sagittarius is all about higher awareness, higher learning. You know, Sagittarius does rule the ninth house, which is the domain of like universities, um, higher learning, higher awareness, spirituality, um, uh, travel, long distance travel, learning new languages, experiencing new cultures, that kind of expansive energy, the new, 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 and not just the new, whereas, you know, the opposite of Sagittarius is Gemini. Wait, did I say that correctly? Where are you? Yes, the opposite of Sagittarius is Gemini. Um, uh, Sagittarius rules the ninth house. Gemini rules the third house. The third house is, or Gemini is about communication and learning and, and, and travel a little bit too. But that's more in like your community, in your known area, in your town, in your state even. If you want to say Gemini is traveling through your own town, your own state, Sagittarius is traveling throughout the country. Okay, and experiencing other walks of life, experiencing other cultures, other neighborhoods, other states, other, uh, you know, it could even, and then, okay, if you want to take it a little bit further, Gemini might be traveling throughout your same country, whereas Sagittarius is traveling outside the country. You know, that's, the, that's well, we're dealing with Sagittarian energy here, okay? <clears throat> and Sagittarius is all about leaving it can at least be seen as leaving one's comfort zone to experience something new something greater something bigger than you could have ever imagined within your same safe space we could say now you do have a golden moment here okay this is the first card out a blessing is on its way an important door is opening for you that will make you very happy but this requires feeling deeply okay there absolutely could be some sort of heart chakra healing um, or some sort of emotional healing. Um, that This may even be mental or intellectual, but there are still going to be some really deep emotions that are going to come up with this, okay? Embrace your feelings and allow yourself and allow to feel them fully. Love is entering into your life. For me, for example, I'm working on understanding why it is I smoke so much <laughs> and why it is I've been smoking for so long and why it is I've been wanting to smoke tobacco specifically for so long, ever since I was a young child. Specifically, that's heart chakra stuff because what I've come to understand right now is what I want to smoke the most when I'm having trouble in my heart like feeling something or some sort of emotional situation or feeling betrayed or feeling unworthy that kind of energy right and so i'm getting to, i'm slowly getting to the bottom of understanding that right i'm taking this feeling deeply energy quite literally you know heart chakra healing or feeling something you're really going to have to feel okay and then finally you have <coughs> excuse me commitment commit to this next stage in your development and there will be a promise fulfilled in some form. So this is also why I'm kind of getting like, this is like a, a New Year's resolution retrograde. Because say like, technically speaking for me, if I can get a sufficient amount of, enough of an understanding as to why I have been doing these things, why I have been caught up in this, coping mechanism in this uh, toxic cycle you could say if i can get a deeper understanding of why it, i do it it's going to help me understand or help me put into place something better or it's going to help me understand how to rewrite the programming maybe even why i need to rewrite this programming right it was never enough to just say you know don't stop don't smoke because it's bad for you yeah we do a lot of things that are bad for us so the fuck what <laughs> well don't smoke it's gonna kill you i'm gonna die someday anyway like what the fuck <laughs> right it's never it's never that's never been enough for me for me it needs to be well why am i doing it all to what am i doing why am i doing it all together and since i've been in such a strong healing period of really working on healing self-worth issues and all that kind of stuff 
this is now a perfect time for me to actually start to do this because I'm ready for it, right? Here you are too, ready for it. You've been going through these spiritual tests and these tests are about to wrap up. You're about to reach the next level, but you're going to need to commit to this. Now, Sagittarius can be a bit of a wishy-washy energy, but that's not what we're going for here. I'm seeing the Hierophant in my head now, okay? The Hierophant is about learning, commitment, discipline, right? Okay, um, let's get into, I wanna break this down a bit. Seven of Swords is at the bottom of this deck. Some of you, I'm hearing lying, cheating, stealing, but from yourself. You've been cheating yourself out of something recently. Or that's, for some of you, that's the understanding that you're coming to. All right, uh, here we go. On the split, we have the Seven of Swords. Now this, I pulled this out of my quick draw basket here. Um, we had the Seven of Swords, that's what we started with. Now on the split, we've got the King of Cups. Okay, having the emotional maturity to stand up for yourself, having the emotional maturity to get to the deeper philosophical understandings of something, to look at something with emotional maturity and stability and be able to ride the wave of whatever it is is going, you're going, is gonna be happening. Look, feeling deeply, okay? And the only, way, the only way that you'll really be able to feel this deeply is if you are allowing yourself to be emotionally mature enough to do it. But we have this. We've been working on this. This is what the spiritual tests that we've got going on here have been preparing us for, have been fortifying us for. <clears throat> so that now, when the big waves come, we're able to surf them officially or effectively. Yes? Excellent. Uh-oh. Don't want to do it that way. I don't want my cards being in reverse. Oop, then to the Knight of Cups after that. Okay, compassion, understanding giving to yourself, approaching yourself as a friend, wanting to commit to this healing work, this healing energy. I like that, you guys. I really, really like that. Let's get deeper, all right? Show us more, please, spirit. Damn, look, seven of swords again, now to the six of wands, overcoming some victories. This feels very personal, you guys. I, I, I mean, like, uh, there... There may be some individuals subsequently involved in this situation, but this really feels deeply personal. This is really about you, about you, about your relationship with yourself, which makes sense because the main focus of this energy of Mercury retrograde in this period is Sagittarius and a bit of Ophiuchus, but really I'm putting the focus really mostly on the expansiveness of Sagittarius. And the ruler of Sagittarius is in the sign of the self. Jupiter is in Aries right now. So the more that you can focus on healing your own personal wounds, getting to the bottom of why you believe certain situations about yourself, about life in general, certain habits you may wanna let go of. If you can really focus on understanding these things for yourself to gain more, bring more enlightenment, more wisdom, more understanding to your current situation without judging it, Okay, without even necessarily saying I'm learning about this so I can change it, really just learn about it to understand it. And then from there, you can make the, the decisions and how you want to shift, adjust, or even change things in the future. But if you can really focus on gaining the understanding for yourself about yourself, that's where the blessings are going to come in. That's where the victory is going to come in. That's how Jupiter is going to be able to bless you in this situation here six of wands and the hanged man look i literally just said this your victory comes from your victory comes from the change in perspective the understanding the enlightenment the hanged man and then everything fell to the ace of cups this is and that and this is absolutely going to lead to greater self-love which ultimately may lead to someone else being able to come in and bring you this cup of love. But really, you're manifesting this for yourself underneath that as the magician, okay? All right, kids. I'm going to give this one last shuffle. 
and then <laughs> stability within oneself, the hanged man. <clears throat> All right, last shuffle. All right, cool. First thing I want to look at, we, we're landing, ending with the hanged man at the bottom of the deck. Oh, I've got to wrap this up. <clears throat> First thing I want to look at for the collective is feeling deeply. All right, what are we feeling deeply about spirit? What is this feeling deeply energy for Mercury retrograde? Page of Pentacles. Wanting to start over. Yeah, Ace of Wands is the next card out. Wanting to start over in some way. Seven of Wands. Ah, okay. And the Nine of Pentacles. This is all about independence and stability. Um, but wanting to start over. Um, and and I, I'm feeling you have the Page of Pentacles here. Starting a new commitment. Okay, breaking ground on a new reality in your life. And the Ace of Wands is definitely the inspiration to do that. For me, for example, and as, always, as I always say, I really, I like to share my experience, or at least pivotal parts of my, pivotal parts of my experiences because it helps bring clarity to you guys. It helps put things into perspective. So take it as it resonates. But for me, this Ace of Wands energy would represent my desire to either reduce the amount of uh, tobacco that I smoke or quit altogether. Okay, Ace of Wands. I've had that inspiration. Page of Pentacles is the energy of breaking ground on that, getting started on that, getting started on that process of learning about it or starting to take those first necessary steps towards the change I'm looking to make. While the Seven of Wands is giving energies of putting up boundaries from the past or towards the past, not from the past, not like boundaries I used to have in the past. I mean, boundaries up against the past. Literally looking at these situations and saying, okay, no more. Your energetic influence over my life stops here. That's what feeling deeply is representing for the collective. Take it as it resonates, okay? And this is even able, you are, I mean, this is even possible because of the level of sovereignty that you have achieved, okay? We've been talking about this, moving from this nine of cups energy to the nine of pentacles energy for some time now in the collective. For me, that nine of cups energy is like, oh, well, I smoke and it's a coping mechanism and blah, 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 okay? Well, that's just what I do. That's my comfort zone. That's what I'm used to. That's what I know. So I'm going to stay there. I don't want to be there anymore. <coughs> I, forget why. I don't want to be there anymore. So I'm going to do the work to fit into this space. Nine of Pentacles. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. trying to see if there's anything else that I want to say about that. Um, I want to get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more. Anything else for feel deeply, feeling deeply for the collective, please? Next, you have the seven of pentacles. To the empress, anything else for feeling deeply for the collective? Damn. Okay, I was going to say this. And actually, I was going to say this when the seven of pentacles came out. We have the king of pentacles at the bottom of the deck now. The, uh, for some of you, this has to do with a father, a father figure. Take it as it resonates. But when the Seven of Pentacles came out, this is what I wanted to say. Um, it feels like time is up for something. It feels like you've finally gotten to the place where now you're actually starting to question it. It finally feels like you're at a place now where you're ready to come out of that comfort zone about the situation. The same way you've always thought about it, the same way you've always perceived it, whatnot, whatever. And now changing that to fit either changing the circumstance or situation or changing your involvement in the circumstance or situation, whatever that means, to better fit your life as it stands right now. With this seven of pentacles, you have the empress and then judgment, resurrection, a wake up call even. 
Some of you may have had a wake up call or during this Mercury retrograde, you're going to have a wake up call. And the Empress is giving me energies of wanting to love and nurture yourself better. For me, not wanting to smoke uh, nicotine, uh, um, tobacco anymore. I mean, like, my lungs are going to be way happier, right? My lungs are going to be way healthier. My body is going to be way healthier just by removing that from regular use, if not removing it altogether, right? This is where this feeling deeply aspect is coming into play. There is either there has been some sort of wake-up call. For me, that wake-up call was being incredibly out of breath so so quickly like that's not normal for me it never has been normal for me and i don't like it that's been my wake-up call and ever since ever since i realized that i've been inspired holy shit i really got to do something about this and at this point i'm ready to do something about it why <clears throat> because i am ready to focus on the issues that have had me cycling through this coping mechanism this way i'm ready to face that now there is going to be either there has been or there's going to be some sort of wake-up call that gets you to question the validity of whatever it is you've been flowing with cycling with here the seven of pentacles asking yourself well is this really what i want or Finally coming to the point where you're now you're starting to question it. You're starting to look at the circumstance or situation or relationship, the job, whatever this is for you. You're starting to look at it from a much more critical point of view and saying to yourself, well, actually, how is this really serving me? Is this serving me at all? Well, it's serving me in some way. But what is that? What way is that? And number one, is that healthy? Number two, is that beneficial? Most likely the answers are no. Number three, do I even want this any longer? Like I'm getting this sort of this sort of result here. And I may have been getting it over and over again, time and time again. But is this is this really what I want? Is this ever what I've wanted? Or at least is this what I want now or, or anymore moving forward? Do I still want this in my life? The Empress gives you the unconditional love and nurturance to answer that question for yourself and not only answer that question for yourself, but start to make the changes. <clears throat> this is another point as to why I'm feeling the message for somebody here is you don't need anyone else's validation other than your own to make some sort of change for yourself. The Empress provides you with that unconditionally loving, nurturing energy saying, honey, you can have whatever it is you want. Okay, and judgment is here. Oh, well, I guess I should have been. Well, judgment is here with that wake up call or that moment of resurrection, that moment of truth saying, okay, well, we got to do something about this now. It's time to go. It's time to wake up, right? King of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. And underneath that is the fool to the hanged man. You guys, you can't make this stuff up. The king of pentacles is that solid, stable, grounded energy, self-sufficient energy. The fool is taking that leap of faith in a new direction. And this feels like it is solely a decision that you are making for yourself. Because of the change in perspective, because of the enlightenment, because of the heightened awareness you have achieved and the subsequent knowledge that's come through that awareness the change in perspective the enlightenment that's come through that awareness can't make this stuff up but it's going to take commitment king of pentacles is the overall energy of course we were clarifying feeling deeply but king of pentacles is all about commitment let's talk about this commitment then what's this commitment energy commit to this next stage in your development and there will be a promise fulfilled in some form okay what is this commitment then spirit can you tell us about this commitment the three of pentacles self mastery i mean you can't like you cannot make this up 44 44 on the counter commitment anything else for commitment i mean that's pretty straightforward you guys <laughs> the page of swords 
There is definitely, ah, Gemini energy. Yes, this is about learning. This is absolutely about learning, increasing your awareness. Damn, look at that. You guys, you can't make this shit up, honey. You cannot make this shit up. Look, we've got the nine of pentacles again at the bottom of the deck. This commitment is three of pentacles, page of swords, Gemini, knight of wands, Sagittarius. There you go. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, but we're focusing on the Gemini aspect of this because it's about the learning, about the understanding, about the investigating. Sagittarius is that expansive, excited, higher awareness, willing to travel, willing to see new things, experience new things, try new cultures, try new experiences, try new methods, learn new methods, teach new methods. To the three of pentacles, self-mastery. I mean, it doesn't get any more self-explanatory. Nine of pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> this could result in some sort of connection coming through. Um, you may strike a healing chord during this time period that really allows love to come in. Because underneath the nine of pentacles is the two of cups. Okay, but this is also a commit making a commitment to yourself. Absolutely. To stand your ground, to do your work, to go to the gym so you can get slim and trim and you can fit into that dress or you can fit into that suit so that you can go to that event, that event being your Ten of Pentacles. We've been talking about this, right? This Mercury, okay, see, we have been talking about going from that Nine of Cups energy to the Nine of Pentacles energy. This Mercury retrograde may be the time period in which you are really able to fit yourself into this space. Or get the programming, the old programming deleted, erase that, so that you can write new programming to then keep moving you forward once mercury goes direct what take it as it resonates however it works out for you yeah let's look at golden moment golden moment for the collective please spirit what do you want to say about that do the world golden moment the hierophant there it is right there commitment learning Ooh. Ooh. Oh, and the Queen of Wands reversed. This is giving me a very selfish energy. This Queen of Wands reversed. Putting your ego aside. This is not what about your ego wants. This is not about what your ego wants. If this was about what my ego wanted, I would still be smoking tobacco. I'm not saying that I've completely eradicated it yet. Um, I haven't completely worked it out of my system. There are still moments where I get an urge to, I want, I want a cigarette right now, but there's usually something behind it. There's a reason why. Something is being triggered. <clears throat> okay, because I've gotten past the point of, I just want to smoke for fun recreationally because it makes me feel like shit. Anytime I, take, I have a cigarette, I always feel awful afterwards. So it's not about that anymore. Now it's, there's a reason for it. Something is being triggered. What is that? Learning about that. Studying it. Being committed to it. But releasing my ego. I just heard vanity with this Queen of Wands reversed. It's not about what my ego wants. It's about what my higher self wants. It's about learning and com learning and, and growing and expanding and completing cycles so that I can, so that we can move on to the next level. Our overall energy here. Knight of Cups is the bottom of the deck. <laughs> the Knight of Cups to the hanged man, to the fool, to the King of Pentacles. Okay? This is your golden moment. Commit to it. Commit to it, you guys. All right? This is about learning. You know what's so crazy? I feel like this combination, I don't, it was the Hierophant and I think it was the Queen of Wands. And it might have even been <coughs> the world too, but it was in the Patreon reading. 
Um, and there, and, and when that came out, I didn't say it, I didn't think about it until after, but that was kind of an energy of, if you saw the reading, then you know what I'm talking about. It's an energy of staying in your lane while we move, because that energy was about being in between worlds. Stay in your lane. Um, stay focused, stay grounded, and stay in your law of attraction, your manifestation. For the collective here, though, this Queen of Wands came out in reverse. So there is something about ego here for the collective in terms of this golden moment. To release some sort of egoic cycle you've been going through. Okay? All right. Finally, um, let's look at, I just want to look at next level. Our last, our last card here. Anything you want to say about next level, please, Spirit? In terms of Mercury retrograde. Woo! Nine of Wands is the first card. Next level. You've been doing this for a long time. I do feel like the cycle is coming to an end. Determination, not giving up. That's good. Woo! Overall energy is the Knight of Pentacles. Yes. Okay. But then you have this with, wow. You have the Nine of Wands. Not giving up. Determination. Then you have the Five of Swords and the Seven of Swords. Look at that. But then also you have the Ace of Cups. So this is what we're moving towards. This is what we've been moving towards. Knight of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. A lot of hard work has been done. Okay? And don't give up because you're about to supersede. You're about to rise above these energies here. Deception, lies, trickery, backstabbing, competition, all that kind of stuff. And you're moving towards love, self-love, which ultimately could bring you some sort of romantic love, but really the focus is on the self first. Let's close this out with a message from the Crystal Mandala. Yes? All right. Closing this out for the collective Mercury Retrograde. Final Mercury Retrograde of the year, guys. And we're moving into 2024. So let's get this. Let's get this, y'all. Closing message, please, Spirit, for this Mercury Retrograde. Ooh. Card number five, Individuality. I love this card. One of my absolute favorites. Uh, Angel Eil. Iahe and Labradorite individuality. This is, I'm telling you, y'all, this is all about the self, okay? Self-healing, self-awareness. Self-awareness is key. Individuality. Here we go. We bring you the gift of individuality. As you receive our gift, you will feel safe enough to enjoy the aspects of yourself that truly make you unique. From particular interests to your way of expressing yourself to what excites and inspires your spirit, <coughs> excuse me, your individuality is the way the divine wishes to manifest itself through you this lifetime. The key to your divine life purpose is to know who you are and to love and accept that self so that you allow natural development and expression in the world to take place. As you accept your individuality, you will understand how natural it is for you to fulfill your life purpose and divine destiny. You will instinctively gravitate towards people, places, and energies that support you in being your bright, true spirit. You will grow and express yourself more freely and authentically, and the divine light within shall shine brighter without a veil of fear, confusion, or shame obscuring it. You have no need to compare yourself to any other. You are a unique child of the universe with your own special path and destiny to fulfill. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Mercury retrograde for you. I hope everything goes well for you. I love you all so very much. I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. <clears throat> and if you would like to get more consistent messages with me and our collective, definitely head on over to Patreon, patreon.com 
slash divine conversations where i do regular readings for the collective there more regularly than i do here on youtube um, and if you would like personal readings with me, I am reserving those for Patreon members right now only. So if you would like to get a personal reading with me, join, head over to Patreon, join us over there. Um, there are certain tiers that will give you either a 10 or a 20% discount on your readings, your personal readings, or you could even get one included every month, one 30 minute live session or recorded reading with me per month with your subscription, which is actually $10 less than a one-off 30-minute session. Yes? Check that out, patreon.com slash divine conversations. But I love you all so very much. Happy Mercury Retrograde, and I will see you soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>